Hi, this is Eric White. This is part two of a deep dive into OpenXML, word processing ML, fields, and hyperlinks. To start this segment, I'm going to show you a little trick that can help make the markup more comprehensible. There are various aspects of this markup here that we don't really care about. We don't really care about the RSID values. We don't care about the bookmark start element in this particular circumstance. Sometimes with other fields we do care about them, but in this particular case we do not. I'm going to close this document, not save changes to it. I've written a little application that uses the markup simplifier class that is part of the XHTML converter project. This application allows me to specify various options and then apply those options to an OpenXML document and then I can examine the markup after it's been simplified. I've talked about that markup simplifier previously. Here's a link so that you can download the code for markup simplifier if you want to. In this particular case, I want to simplify several components of the OpenXML markup. First of all, I want to remove RSID info. Second of all, is I want to remove the proofing codes. I'm not really interested in the no proof or proof error elements. Also, in this particular case, I want to remove bookmarks and I want to remove web hidden. And I'm going to apply this to test four. Let's drag test four onto Visual Studio again. Now we can more clearly see the begin the instructional text of a space followed by DA that is bold, followed by TE that is not bolded, followed by the separate, followed by the value of the field, and then finally with the field char of field char type of end. Now we've looked at one form of the simple markup for fields, and that is the FLD simple element. Next, let's look at the simplified markup for hyperlinks. I'm going to create a new document. I'm going to put in some text and create a link by pressing Control K and link to my blog. Let's do Alt F9 so that we can see the text of the field. Let's save it, close it. Let's drag that to Visual Studio format the document. The simple form of the hyperlink markup is this hyperlink element. And inside that hyperlink element, there are a few interesting aspects to the markup. First is this resource ID, and that RID5 is a reference to an external reference in the document. So here you can see the reference to an external link http colon whack whack eric white dot com. If I look at that external link, I can see that the ID of that external link is RID5, and that corresponds to the RID5 of the hyperlink element. If you are parsing an OpenXML document looking for hyperlinks, when you find that hyperlink element, you have to find the ID, then go find the external reference, and then you can get the actual link that the hyperlink goes to. I'm going to show you another form of a hyperlink. Close this document. Create a new document. Insert a bunch of text. Now I'm going to insert a bookmark at this point. I'll call it bookmark A. Then I'll come up here and I'll type control K to insert a hyperlink. I'll go to a place in this document. I'll select bookmark A and click OK. Save it, close it, drag it to Visual Studio format. Again, we are using the simple form of the hyperlink markup. We can see that it has an anchor attribute as opposed to an ID attribute. That anchor attribute refers to this bookmark with the name of A. One important point to note about external hyperlinks, that is hyperlinks to pages on the web or pages outside of this document, is that for the most part, those hyperlinks are represented with the simple form 
and there's a resource ID that points to an external link and the external link has the actual web address. But there are circumstances when a hyperlink takes a different form. I'm going to show you what happens when I create a hyperlink to a page and an anchor within that page. There are certain circumstances where Word chooses to use a different form of markup for the hyperlink, and in some circumstances, Word will not create an external reference. Create a new document. I'm going back over to my old MSDN blog, and I'm going to grab this link with this anchor from my blog map. Come back over here and insert that link. Save it and close it. Let's take a look at the markup that were generated for that action. Drag test 7 to Visual Studio. First thing I'm going to do is look at the links under document.xml and you can see that there is not an external relationship to that URL. What this means is it's not true that you can just look through external relationships to find all the links in a document. Sometimes a link is constructed using simply a field code. Let me show you what the markup looks like. Open document.xml and format it. And here we can see that in this particular circumstance Word created the hyperlink using only the field. Word did not create an external relationship and it used the complex form of field markup. At this point in this screencast, we've covered quite a bit of material. We've covered the simple form of field markup. We've covered the complex form of field markup. With the simple form of field markup, we've covered the FLD simple element, and we've also covered the hyperlink element. There's one more interesting topic to cover with regards to fields, which are that fields can nest. A complex field can contain instructional text that itself contains other fields. Let me show you what I mean by that. I'm going to create a new document. I'm going to create this example using the keyboard. First, I'm going to press Control F9 to insert a field. I'm going to insert an if field, and now I'm going to press Control F9 and insert another field, and I'm going to insert a date field. I'm going to say if the date field is equal to 420-2011, if that test is true, then I'm going to say it is 420, and if the test is false, I'm going to say it is not April 20th. I'm going to click on the date field, update it, and we can see the results of that field. It tells us it is 420. If I press Alt F9, I'm going to switch to the field code view. I'm going to change it to April 21st, and I'll say it is April 21st. It's not April 21st. Click on the date field, click Update and Alt F9, and it tells me it is not April 21st. Now let's look at the markup. Before we look at that markup, I'm going to run this document through the markup simplifier. I'm going to tell the markup simplifier to remove RSID info. I'm going to tell it to remove proofing errors. I'm going to tell it to remove bookmarks and web hidden. Now let's drag test 8 to Visual Studio and take a look at it. Here we can see that we have a field chart type of begin and then we have the instruction text of that field containing the if. We then have included a date field using the simple markup form. The next run contains the continuation of the instruction text for that field. You can see that the continuation of the instruction text includes the comparison 
against April 21st. You can then see the separate and you can see the result of the field and you can finally see the field char with the field char type of end. So that's interesting. Let's do something else. Let's go and cause that date to take the complex form of markup. Press Alt F9. I'll make that D bold and that will force it to take the complex form of markup. Close the document. Run the simplifier, the markup simplifier against it. And drag test date to Visual Studio. And look at the resulting markup. And as expected, we can see a field using the complex form of markup between the begin and separate of the if field. So that's interesting. There's another situation where the results of the field contain fields that are generated by Word. We see this situation with a table of content. Create a new document. Open it. I'm going to insert a couple of headings. Format that as heading 1. Format that as heading 2. Come up here and insert a table of contents. Let's save this document. Close it. Let's run Markup Simplifier on it. When I run the Markup Simplifier on the table of content, I'm not going to remove bookmarks because bookmarks are important to the operation of a table of content. A table of content, the generated table of content includes hyperlinks to bookmarks that are automatically placed in the document. Apply that to the document. Now let's look at test 9 in Visual Studio. One of the things that we notice with the table of content is Word places the table of content inside an OpenXML content control. That actually doesn't impact the functionality of the table of content. It just provides a means by which we can update that table of content. I'll show you what I mean by that real quickly. If we were to come down here and insert an additional heading, we can click here and we can say update the table and update the entire table. That's the purpose of that content control that surrounds the table of content. I'm going to close this and not save it so we can go back. Continue examining the markup in Visual Studio. So dropping down here we can see the complex markup for the table of content field. We can see the begin. We can see the instruction text. We can see the separate. And then in the results of that field, we can see that Word inserted hyperlinks. In this particular case, we can see that the hyperlink is inserted using the simple form of markup. And interestingly enough, we can see that that hyperlink itself contains a nested field, which is a page ref field. Dropping down, we can see the exact same thing for the next line in that table of content. So we can see that Fields can contain nested fields both in the instructional text portion of the field and we can see that in certain situations for certain field types the results of the field or the calculated value of the field contains fields and in fact those fields can themselves contain fields. So that's an awful lot of information that we've covered about fields and hyperlinks. That's enough for these two videos. Thanks for watching.